Hey guys, how you going? This is Billy Eat World again. Thanks for stopping by, and just remember, if you like what you see, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, feel free to take a look at some of my other Battlefield videos if you like. You can find them all in a playlist in the description down below. But anyway, some of you guys that have followed this channel for a while would know by now that of all the guns in BF4, my two favourite weapons are the M16 and the M39. And it got me thinking about military rifles in general, because when you really think about it, in Battlefield, more often than not, it's the standard service rifles that are most memorable. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the evolution of US service rifles since World War I, and in the background, you're going to see them in action in Battlefield games. And by the end of this video, I think you'll agree that these rifles are some of the coolest guns ever designed, and hopefully you'll have learned something new. Before we start though, I should point out that in this video, I'm only going to cover general issue rifles, so you're not going to see SMGs like the Thompson or SOF weapons like the HK416. Also, this video is going to be a bit different because I'm just going to focus on the history of the guns, considering it's going to be pointless to compare the stats from different games. You might also be wondering why I'm only focusing on US service rifles. Well, in a nutshell, we have pretty much the complete timeline available in Battlefield. But feel free to let me know what your favourite service rifle is though if it's not on this list, and you never know, I might be able to cover it in a video in the future. Now, the first gun on this list is the M1903 Springfield, which replaced the Krag in 1903 as the standard issue rifle of the US Army. It was the rifle that the US took to World War I, and it also served in World War II, Korea and Vietnam as a sniper rifle. The reason this rifle remained in active service for so long is because it was based on the German Mauser action, meaning it was very accurate, and it was capable of firing the powerful 30 odd 6 round. The only problem with the Springfield was that with only a 5 round magazine, it could only fire about 15 rounds a minute, which was well short of a rifle like the British Lee Enfield. Bearing this in mind, it was obvious by the end of World War I that more firepower would be needed, which led to the introduction of the BAR in 1918. This gun was the first gas-operated select fire rifle ever to be fielded by the US, and it definitely filled the role it was designed for, firing the same round as the Springfields at up to 600 RPM. It didn't see a lot of service in World War I, but it was used all through World War II, and even as late as the start of the Vietnam War. But by the time it entered World War II, it was starting to show its age, because it was very big and heavy, and with only 20 rounds in the magazine, it wasn't very good at sustained suppressive fire. Now, the BAR showed how effective gas-operated weapons could be, but the replacement for the Springfield would need to be a lot lighter, which led to the introduction of the M1 Garand in 1936. This was the weapon that helped the US win World War II, and it was so successful that it even served through the Korean War and even into Vietnam. Like the Springfield, the Grand also fired the 30-06 round, but the most important difference was that it fired in semi-automatic from an 8-round magazine, and this gave it a rate of fire of up to 50 RPM, which was so effective that General George S. Patton famously described it as the greatest battle implement ever devised. As great as the Garand was though, it was a full length rifle and it fired a full sized cartridge, meaning it wasn't very suitable for vehicle crews or rear echelon troops. The solution to this problem came in 1942 with the shorter M1 carbine, which also was a gas operated semi-automatic design, but instead fired the smaller light 30 cartridge. This cartridge wasn't as big as a full size 30-06, but on the other hand it packed more punch than say a 45 ACP of the Thompson submachine gun. And this meant that without sacrificing too much range and stopping power, you could carry more ammunition and you could use a 15 round magazine. Now, despite the advantages of the M1 carbine, it never fully replaced the Garand, which by the late 50s was starting to show its age and really needed a redesign. Its replacement was known as the M14, which came along in 1959 and still remains in service today in the Army as the Mark 14 EBR and the Marine Corps as the M39 EMR. The M14 fired the new 7.62 NATO round, and it also had a bunch of other upgrades like a 20 round detachable box magazine. It also was capable of firing in fully auto, but it was soon obvious that the average soldier couldn't control it in this mode, so the selector switch was deactivated on most rifles in service. 
At this time, other NATO countries were actually having similar issues with the FNFAL and the HKG-3, whereas on the other side of the Berlin Wall, the Soviets were having more success with the AK-47 assault rifle. Like the M1 carbine, the AK fired a smaller intermediate round, and it soon became obvious the US would need to introduce its own assault rifle, which came in the form of the M16 in 1962. The M16 fired the 5.56 NATO round, which was a lot smaller than the 7.62 NATO, but it made up for this with a 30 round capacity and a rate of fire of up to 950 RPM. And once again, the smaller cartridge meant that US troops could carry more ammo, even more than the Soviets, and it was also a lot easier to control, which made the M16 more accurate in fully automatic. Now, the question is, how do you improve on a weapon as legendary as the M16? Well, once again, as we've seen a few times already in this video, you make it smaller. This was tried a number of times in different designs like the Colt Model 733, but in 1994 the M4 carbine came along, which is the weapon currently replacing the M16. The average soldier doesn't really need a full-length weapon, and the M4 with a 14.5 inch barrel was more than suitable for just about every role. And most importantly, like the M1 carbine back in World War II, its smaller size allows the user to be more mobile, and it's more suitable for troops operating from vehicles. So that pretty much brings us up to date, and who knows where the evolution of the US service rifle will go from here. Weapons like the HK416 and the FN SCAR are currently in use with US Special Forces, but nothing yet has been considered as a viable replacement for the M4. So that's where I'm going to throw it over to you guys. What do you think should be the next standard service rifle of the US military? Do you think a current rifle would be a good fit for the job, or would you like to see a brand new design? Either way, let me know what you think in the comments section below. But anyway guys, that just about wraps up this video, so as always, if you like what you see, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Also check out the links in the description below if you want to see more of my videos, or if you want to support my channel on Patreon, and until next time, see you later, and have a good one.